with that said, we are in the 201st Mosh Pit. This is awesome. We're getting a chance to continue the work. Uh, it's open mic time. Are we going through uh, a transformation? Are things happening? And we know with that, there will be challenges, speed bumps, hurdles, pitfalls. More importantly, what, you know, what, what the opportunity was, you know, that we all tried to articulate in 2022. Um, and I think that it's a, you know, it's a huge conflict. I mean, I think that, you know, and, and it's almost creating, you know, two different societies of workplace. Um, you know, those who get it and are using it, you know, and those who want to go back to a, an era that, uh, you know, shouldn't exist anymore. And then on top of that, you've got org changes that are happening and you've got digital transformation that's happening and you have C-suite and leadership changes. So I just think that everybody is exhausted. Because <laughs> so. we have gone through digital transformation. So, you know, in theory, all these productivity tools are supposed to make us more productive. But instead, we reduced headcount and just put more load on top of everybody. And that's what's stressing everybody out. And it's just it's just generating all this fatigue. So that's and then all the other stuff on top of it. It's going on all across the organization. And so your internal IT group is really stressed by all this. And they don't have the staff to, to implement a new system, redesign your new system, support it. Your, your leadership interested in it, and then the time to implement just suddenly becomes huge. And you're in line with a whole bunch of other people. They already have tools in place, whether it's FM system, planner, and whatever. But nobody is really ready to make a decision. It's all put on hold. It's in pause. And... and it's very agonizing because we all believe that, you know, there are tools available to, to make sure that everyone is participating in a very productive way, but yet that is something that is not being attended to. In their agenda one to 10, maybe the work tech component is in the very bottom. The architects and the people that make the difference, uh, you reinvent it, do something and kind of slice it like it, like you got those five layers underneath the floors where all that junk is in there now, right? What if you had another layer in there that was just soft and warm and cuddly? And everybody walk in the room, they could feel that cuddliness with each other. But that's what we got to do. We got to kind of slice it right in there, embed it right in there, make it more natural that when we walk through that threshold of a door, we stop and say hello. There's going to be a hard road ahead trying to get anything in the workplace even to change and be positive because people are just not going to be happy with whatever they've got. Now that we have more research, more understanding about how people work better, you know, it used to be pay was enough, right? You pay, you work. And we know that that doesn't, we doesn't get people to do the best work and we don't, and we've needed a lot more information and understanding in order to get there. So I think now we have some great information and understanding. But off the back of that, the employee experiential side, and, and and I and I do view it as a renaissance moment because if you give if you give them choice and you don't presume that you can choose better for them, if you really let them let them choose, and then it also we have to also have to rebuild the familiarity with with going to place in the wake of a long period of isolation. You know, I've said this many times uh, uh, in the mosh pit. We, as a company, literally looked at the information over and over and over again and said, well this works. So why are we changing it? Like, what's the point of all this? This is, you know, silliness. At the board level, it has to make sense to them because all these stories, they're not going to want to hear, right? So very early on talking about the impact and the new metrics, and then working for me with the CFO team, the accounting teams to actually have those metrics tracked and enabled. That was a bigger lift than the actual transition to Google suite furniture and the rest of it. So I mean, it varies by region, by cultures and all that, but it, it really got to figure out a way to bridge that gap between what leadership is, some leadership, not all leadership, but what some leadership is is trying to drive versus what's acceptable um, across the masses. I'm working on distributed decision making um, within organizations and leaders are going to have to adapt in ways they've you know, will make today look like child's play. So those are the two sort of emergent thoughts I have. 